Hi, I'm a synthetic chemist. My job is to use chemistry to take simple building blocks and increase their complexity to create products with interesting and useful applications. Chemists are responsible for making the medicine you take, the fertilizer for your gardens, and even the materials to build this very room. Today, I'm going to introduce you to one of the best chemists I know, the ribosome. The ribosome is a molecular machine that does exactly what I do, except a hundred times better and a thousand times faster. The ribosome takes simple building blocks called amino acids and makes them into complex, diverse products called proteins, which are essential for life and taste pretty good too. The ribosome enables bond formation between carbon and nitrogen, and these bonds make up the backbone of all proteins. However, other things like medicine and materials often have backbones made up of carbon-carbon bonds or carbon-sulfur bonds or other such variabilities. And scientists have begun to wonder, can we use the ribosome as a machine to make such products? That's where I come in. My team aims to enable the ribosome to make new bonds so that it can make new products. As a chemist, my work consists of two major phases. Part one is the synthesis phase. In this phase, I design and synthesize new ribosomal inputs that look sort of like the amino acids it's used to, but with added functionalities to do chemistry that it's never done before. After synthesis comes phase two, the testing phase. In nature, the ribosome makes bonds best under certain conditions. So we must ensure that our new chemistry also works in these conditions, first without the ribosome and then with the ribosome. But wait, you might be wondering, we're trying to design chemistry for the ribosome. Why are we doing experiments without it? Well, the chemical reaction that the ribosome enables is actually possible in a laboratory without the ribosome. And if our new chemistry doesn't work without the ribosome, it's not gonna work with it. Once we know that our new chemistry is feasible, the real fun begins. We can transfer our new building blocks to the ribosome and see if it can facilitate new bond formation. This part is still in progress. However, we hope that the ribosome will accept its newly designed inputs and can learn to make products that look more like life-saving medicine, robust materials, and more, a lot more efficiently, which is great for the environment, and a lot more affordably, which is great for everyone. The ribosome has been around for more than 3 billion years, and protein synthesis is its only known role. So I say, and I hope you now agree, let's teach an old ribosome a new trick or two. Thank you.